Good morning and welcome to our service here this morning at the Rimby Alliance Church. We would like to welcome each and every one of you who are here in attendance and those again that are joining us online. It uh, makes it difficult at times this year following what we would consider a normal rotation of services just because it has been so unusual. There, there's always one service that falls in between Christmas and New Year's unless Christmas and New Year's fall on Sunday. It's not the first service of the year where typically you talk about upcoming opportunities and, and service and that type of thing, but it's the wrap-up service that falls in between. Oftentimes we speak to how good Christmas was. Christ has come. We need to prepare ourselves for his redeeming work. And, and typically we mention all the good food and fellowship and all of that that we enjoyed over Christmas. And yet this year it, it really isn't that way. And that's not to say that we did not have good food and fellowship. Amen? But, but it was just a little different than what we normally expect or are accustomed to. I, I don't expect that many of us spent Christmas gallivanting around the country, which we might normally have done. However, as much as I love my fine wife... She didn't seem to get the message. <laughs> Barb made a meal large enough to feed our entire family. I mean, the entire Oak family. Uh, and they weren't there. So I, it created some complications that I will speak to later. But the point being that, that right now, nothing is normal. We, we talked about that in our prayer time, that we, we enter a year not knowing what to expect. And, and typically the plans and, and, and those that are made in preparation, we haven't done this year because we just don't know where things are going. I did, however, this morning, I checked to see what the reports were on COVID. And the Calgary Herald has a headline, something to this effect, Alberta cases over the last two days dip below 1,000. I'm assuming that's a good thing. So I looked up the Edmonton Journal's headline, and it said, COVID-19 cases dropped below 1,000 for the first time since mid-November. So it is moving in the right direction. Um, we know it is there. We know it is real. We don't understand all that pertains to it. But we just pray to God that under his control, that things do move in that right direction, that we see our lives returning to what we might consider is normal. The uncertainty has put a number of, of us under some pressure. Amen? There's been frustration and anxiety and, 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 and things like that. Depression for some that has gone along with all of this. And this morning we're looking in the book of Hebrews, uh, the last chapter of Hebrews. And as, as Paul, as we expect, is the writer of Hebrews, although some would dispute that, um, we see that the writer of Hebrews is doing the same thing. The Jewish people are under pressure, to some degree under persecution. And so Paul is writing to them and just encouraging them to stand fast, to stand up, and, and pointing out some of the wonderful things that we have as Christians. Unfortunately for the Jews there, many of those Jewish Christians were, were facing pressure from their own Jewish people who wanted them to recant their faith and, and to return to Judaism. I had a, a thought this week that sort of lined itself up with what Paul says here in, in Hebrews 13. And so I thought, you know, that, that might be the thing to look at. Every year we, we talk about the Advent themes, and although there are multiple themes that can be utilized, traditionally we have looked at hope, joy, love, and peace as our Advent themes. But, but we don't want to give the, the message that, that that only happens at Christmas. Hope, love, joy, peace are consistent throughout the year. Our God does not change. His character, His nature, His attributes do not change. Those are things that, that we have all year long, not just at Christmas time. And I hope that I've made that clear as we've moved through the Advent themes. Our God is a good God. Our God is an awesome God. All year long, not just at Christmas. As we focus on Christmas, the coming King, what all it means to us, 
Jesus has now arrived. The, the shepherds, the wise men have come. They've seen his birth. May we recognize that, that that carries throughout the year all the promises and blessings that pertain from that. God is at work. This is who he is all year long. Should we need love, joy, peace, or hope? It is ours through God. It is available. As are all of the rest of God's attributes, his mercy, grace, uh, forgiveness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness. At times, his wrath, his judgment, his justice are also there all year long. In Hebrews 13, uh, verses 1 through 8, we see what the writer has to deliver to us for a message. Let's look to the reading of God's word. Hebrews 13, 1 through 8. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, and today, and forever. Let's pray. As we come before you this morning, Lord God, we, we look at this passage of Scripture and we see promises that are made at that time to the Jewish Christians, and we know they apply to us as well. We see also this con concluding verse in this passage, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. May we take great peace in that. For Lord, you do not change, and all the promises and blessings you have, you have made to us through your word apply at all times in our lives. May you be the source of our encouragement and inspiration and strength of our hope, love, joy, and peace. Lord, that do carry and sustain us throughout the year. This we pray in your most holy name. Amen. I have a bit of a long story to tell this morning to get to the point uh, that I'm trying to make. On Christmas Eve this year, it was just Barb and I. And Barb came up with a wonderful idea for the two of us, and that is that we would watch a movie together and have fondue. Normally on a Christmas Eve, we couldn't do this because we would be participating in the joint Christmas Eve service with the other churches in the community. So Barb said, let's do something different this year. Well, she had me at fondue. Uh, it didn't matter what the rest was. I was in agreement. So Barb did. We started off with a cheese fondue. And in that cheese fondue, we had bread and meatballs and tater tots. Now, that was a little unusual, but, but again, unusual circumstances. It was what we had at hand, so bread and meatballs and tater tots. Not a typical Christmas Eve uh, uh, meal, but it was wonderful to spend that time just together. Matter of fact, it was the live version of Mulan, if any of you have seen it, that, that we watched while we were eating our uh, Christmas fondue. And the reason is we didn't watch our Christmas Eve service at that time because I knew it would put me to sleep watching myself. <laughs> so we went ahead and, and watched a movie while we were doing this. All, all of it was good. It was very enjoyable. I think the bread was my favorite because it really allows the, the flavor of the cheese to stand out the most. So, But again, so we, we had this um, bread and meatballs and, and tater tots. It, part of what made this wonderful is the fact it was just Barb and I. Do you know what the problem is with fondues? Too much competition. You get a group of six or eight people sitting around a fondue pot, and, and now you've got to start stabbing people or giving them elbows so that you can get your, your food in. I didn't even have to spill anybody's eggnog this year so that I could steal their food when they weren't looking. So it was a good year. We enjoyed this this time that we had together. Christmas Eve, the two of us. I was full. 
from the cheese fondue. And Barb brought out the chocolate fondue. Okay. I, I, I had to sacrifice myself because there's no way I was going to let a chocolate fondue pass by. So, chocolate fondue. Um, we had bananas, apples, and marshmallows. Now, I was pouting because Barb had promised strawberries to dip in the chocolate, but we didn't have the strawberries. So, bananas, apples, apples, and marshmallows. At the end of that, I was stuck on the couch. I couldn't get up. We, we had consumed so much while we were watching the movies. Um, the point being, there was more than enough for the two of us. There was leftovers. The leftovers were put in the fridge, put away, even though the following day was Christmas. And what happens on Christmas? Other food, more food. Um, we did the traditional route, uh, although I understand some of you did not. I know that Christmas meal was steaks. What about others? Uh, other unusual, interesting food you had for Christmas meal, or did it run the normal turkey and ham? Normal turkey and ham? Well, I was still full on Christmas afternoon, and we had turkey and ham, mashed potatoes and Brussels sprouts. I didn't. I didn't eat any. No, I didn't eat any. We had candied yam, which is sweet potatoes covered in melted marshmallows. And I didn't have any of that either. Um, it, again, it's not that it's bad, it's just there was so much other stuff that was better. So green salad, jellied salad, and this, this is, I, I know that my, my wife loves me because she made cherry coke jello salad. You know what the, the, the main ingredient of, of cherry coke jello salad is? It's, it's not coke, although you put in basically a liter of coke. It is cherry pie filling. So it tells you how sweet this Jello salad is. It is absolutely wonderful. But we also had pickles, cranberry in a can, buns, two kinds of stuffing, two kinds of gravy. And I'm sure there was more. I've just forgotten what all else was there. There was a tremendous amount of food. And so obviously, a lot of it went into the fridge. And because we couldn't fit it all into our fridge upstairs, some of it went into the fridge downstairs as well to be stored. Um, which brings us to Boxing Day yesterday. Supper time. Throughout the day, I had been snacking. I had been eating the jello salad with the whipped cream because nobody else in the house would eat it. So it was my responsibility. I took my responsibility seriously. But at supper, it was time for leftovers and a repeat of the, the highlights or the favorites from Christmas dinner the night before. So I loaded up a plate with turkey both kinds of dressing, which was meat dressing and cornbread dressing. Put a dollop of mashed potatoes. Not really a dollop. It was one of those small Tupperware containers that I just sort of dumped, dumped on the top. Now, I know, I know there was only, or I know there was no green stuff uh, on there, but, but I, I, I was worried more about getting to the good stuff. Um, my, my practice is this, when I prepare a plate like that, we have these plastic plates you put over top to cover it up so the food doesn't spit everywhere. So I put that in the microwave for a minute and a half to get all of that heated up. And, 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 and then my practice is that I take the gravy. And we had, as I mentioned, two types of gravy. We had turkey gravy and ham gravy, but because it was the turkey I was eating, it was the turkey gravy I used. So I then put globs of uh, turkey gravy on the top. And, and, and we know that when you put it in the fridge, it congeals. So you've got to sort of put it on, mash it out a bit, back in the microwave for another minute and a half so that everything gets covered with this, this gravy. As it was in the microwave, my mashed potatoes started to bubble. And I went, that's odd. Why are my potatoes bubbling? However, I just let it go, let it heat up. And when I took it out, I lifted the plastic cover off and I got this big long string. And I thought, why are my potatoes stringy? Some of you already know where this is going, don't you? I had dumped the fondue cheese all over my food rather than the mashed potatoes because they're a similar color and they looked somewhat like a similar consistency. Okay, after a few screams and yells, it wasn't quite that bad, but Barb said, what did you do? 
So I explained it to her. Well, Barb had this ingenious idea. Take the tater tots that had been prepared for the cheese fondue, add them into the cheese and gravy, and you've got poutine. All right. So my, my boxing evening meal ended up being, yes, pure. But, but it was Christmas turkey and stuffing and cheese poutine with tater tots. It really didn't work well. It just did not work well. Why do I go through all of this? It's because I need to say this. We had a lot of food left over. I found myself on that day preparing food for our cats. And that may in and of itself sound funny, but I was preparing food for our cats. I was standing there at the kitchen counter with the two of their bowls up on the counter, and I was cutting the turkey into nice little pieces for, for the cats. Um, how many of you would have done that? Well, see, see, that's what hit me. As I stood there doing this, here's our normal routine for the, for the cats. We actually have, uh, in front of the counter, we have five bowls. One bowl, which is for clean water. We have two tiny bowls, which was where we put their... Um, I can't remember the proper term, but, but the hard food, the little pieces of hard food. And then we've got two larger bowls that we put their wet or canned food in. So twice a day we'll put in each of the cats. We'll get a quarter of a can of canned food. Um, the the kib I can't remember, I was going to say kiblets. I can't remember what it's called. But anyways, that stuff is kept mostly full all the time. So that the cats can snack throughout the day in between the meals that they're fed of the canned food. And then most days, the, uh, the cats also re re receive treats. Generally, when we go for, for lunch, either Barb or myself will put a handful of treats down on the floor from, okay, we have spoiled cats. We, we do, and we know that. But as I stood preparing a Christmas meal for the cats and cutting up Christmas turkey into small pieces for them, I, I, I went, why am I doing this? But, but I'll tell you why. Here, here, here's, here's the thought that came to me. It is my nature. I love animals. Now, I feel like a trader because I'm a dog person, not a cat person. We have two cats because we made a decision to go that way. It's just at our age and stage of life with cats, it's easier to get away quick. Um, well, you can. You put out food and clean litter boxes and you run. Dogs, you're phoning people, you're making arrangements, you're taking them to the kennel or whatever. It's a lot more involved. But really, when I look back over the animals that we have had over the years of our life, every one of them has been spoiled. It's just, it's our nature. It's the way that we are. Barb calls the cats her boys. And I'll be working in the den and, and she'll make a comment, where are the boys? Well, we don't have sons. We have son-in-laws, amen, two wonderful son-in-laws. But we have boys, which are the cats. We, we, we have never been farmers. We've never had farm animals. Um, some of our relatives who are farmers have laughed at us at the way that we act and react with our, with our animals. But that is our nature. The reality is, as long as I have a pet, and I need to clarify this because my daughter is sitting here listening to me, and I don't want her to disagree with me. I am talking about our pets, not your pets. Um, because I do treat other people's pets differently. Not that I treat them badly, but they're not ours. Um, we will spoil our pets. We have. That's our pattern. It's our practice. We will continue to do that. It's not going to change. Why? Because I am who I am. And, and in thinking that, that this is my nature, it is who I am, I was reminded of a conversation that Barb and Courtney had just recently. Uh, Courtney had made the comment that one of the things she appreciates about watching me as I, as I preach is she sees a different person in, in many respects than the person that she grew up with. I tend, by my nature, to be subdued, fairly low-key, easygoing, um, fairly nice guy, Grumpy, grumpy, with a weird sense of humor. 
All those in favor. Does that describe who I am? But, but, but I'm that way because it is my nature. I act that way because it is who I am. Let me share another story with you. Christmas Eve. I phoned Carolyn. And I said to Carolyn, I said, are you ready for tonight? What, what do you mean? Well, you're playing music tonight at the Christmas Eve service because we couldn't have the joint Christmas Eve service. Um, we, we were having a service here, and so Carolyn was uh, providing the music for it. How many of you came to that service? <laughs> there wasn't one. <laughs> and I eventually admitted that and, and wished them a Merry Christmas. And Carolyn's comment to me was, you're weird. <laughs> But, but, but that's my nature. It is who I am. Take it or leave it. That is what I am going to be like. I have driven my loving wife crazy for 36 wonderful years by doing silly things. It is just my nature. And as I thought about that and, and Courtney's statement that what intrigues her is she doesn't see this animation, the, 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 this passion Normally in my life, because I'm often going to be the guy that's sitting in the corner, quiet, maybe even having a nap. Um, that, that is who I am, uh, you know, in a, in a big group, large setting. Um, but yet, God brings a passion out in me. Amen? There are times when I'm speaking, I can't help. And, and, and I will say this, I, can't, I grew up in that uh, society where men did not cry. Yet there are times that God brings me to tears, and talking about God brings me to tears, and praise God for that. There are times when I talk about serving Him and, and the mission that we have and that we share, that, that, that God will just, I don't know how to explain, explain it, but it's the Holy Spirit at work in my life. And, and that is powerful. That is just powerful. I praise God that when I bring his word that I am a different person than I am normally because it exhibits the power of God, his spirit at work in my life. I've been this way for all of my life, basically. The, the ladies have known me for 30 plus years. I can't say how long because I'd give away Courtney's age. Um, but this is who I am. That doesn't mean that I'm perfect. That doesn't mean I don't need to change. That doesn't mean there haven't been things I've changed. Honey, over the 36 years we've been together, have there been changes in my life? Oh. Amen. God is at work. Matter of fact, my mother once bought me a pin. And on the pin it says, please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. Anybody here disagree? God finished with any of you? No. God is not finished. God will change. But who we are at the core basically remains the same. We have been involved with the church for almost 20 years in different capacities. Many of you, or at least some of you, have been here for close to that long a period of time. I know oftentimes what to expect. What makes it fun for me is I sometimes know which buttons to push. Now, Harold is not here, or I would have some fun with Harold. I want to tell you this. Harold's my brother. I mean that 100%. Harold is my brother. I know exactly if I have a need that he could fulfill, he would be willing to do it. Why? Because of the love that we share in our Lord. Alan is the same thing. Matter of fact, I frustrate Alan sometimes because I tend to be a little bit hard-headed. And with his, his heart, he wants to do things that I'm, oh, no, that's fine, that's fine. And so sometimes he has to get frustrated with me and say, no, this is what's happening. <laughs> Praise God. But, but see, the reality is that we all have these characteristics, that, that the nature that we know and see of each other, and God is even more so. How many of us need to change again? Yes, we do. Amen. God doesn't. God cannot change. He is perfect. God is immutable. He is unchangeable. His nature, His attributes, His characteristics are consistent because of who He is. If we have ever felt God's love, He is always loving. Amen? If we have ever needed His mercy or His grace, His forgiveness, it is there for us. We are the ones who change. We are the ones who change, not God. May we come to rely upon God. He has promised never to leave nor forsake us. 
He will always demonstrate the same nature, attributes, and character for our entire lives on this earth, even if we don't understand it. And that, my friends, should bring us comfort. What is there about God's nature that we have found comfort and appreciation in? Think on this. What is there about God's nature that we have taken comfort in? It will never change. We know that. Throughout our entire lives, it will never change. Matter of fact, this is, I read that this, this week, it is reported that as the first American astronaut prepared to go into space, one reporter asked, what are you depending on most in your venture? No doubt the reporter expected the astronaut to say something about the quality of the equipment, his navigational skills, or the people at the space center. But instead, his res response was this, that God will not change his laws. That God will not change his laws. Why? Because the equipment, the training, and ever, everything had been for a certain set of, of natural laws that God put into place. If God changed them, it would be a catastrophe. But what can we rely upon God? He is consistent. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ. The same yesterday and today and forever. If we look at that verse this morning, how far back does yesterday go? How far in the future is forever? God does not change. He is consistent. And just in case we look at this one verse, and we believe that it really is speaking only about Jesus, Malachi 3.6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Now this was being addressed to the Israelite nation. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. This was God's protection over the Israelite people. But I am the Lord, I change not. James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And, and, and as, as the writer here is describing, as James is describing this shadow of turning, he's talking about the sun. The sun rises and falls every day. There's, there's shadows that creates as it moves, and that's the expectation, is that it constantly changes, yet there is none of that in God. He is consistent. Hebrews 1, 10-12. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and, all, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. This is our God. Do we take comfort in the fact that we know God will not change, that God cannot change? His laws are consistent, and as we look at the laws of nature, we see that. His love remains forever. C.S. Lewis said this, This is God's love for us. God doesn't love us because we deserve His love, but because He has chosen to love us. Though our feelings come and go, God's love for us does not. God's love for us is a much safer subject to think about than our love for Him. We can never love anyone too much. The trouble is that we often love God too little. We often love God too little. As we look at this past year, what sort of love have we shown for God? The God who is consistent, the God who has carried us through in certain times. We are here this morning... And praise God, we have the opportunity to come and bring Him our honor and worship and praise to, to come before His glory. It is why we are here this morning. God loves us. As we move into an uncertain year, that love continues, amen? His love continues. But it, it's not just about love. The, the other Advent themes apply. Hope and joy and, and peace. His other attributes apply. Mercy, grace, forgiveness, holiness as well, justice and judgment. All of those are eternal, unchangeable, immutable. It's because God is who He is. He does not, cannot, will not change. 
This continues to be an odd time. It's been an odd year. And again, we don't know what the future holds. But as the expression goes, we know who holds the future. Amen? We know who holds the future. So as difficult as this year has been, and the unknown aspect of what's coming up next year, we know who holds the future. We need to understand that God wants us to know Him. He's given us His Word so that we may come to know Him better. He has allowed His Son to come and to, to die on our behalf so that we have a personal relationship with Him. He has sent us His Spirit who dwells within us to draw us unto Him. God wants a relationship with us that we may know and experience Him. God does not change. His love is unconditional and unending. And if, in these difficult times, if it's not His love we're looking for, neither do His forgiveness, mercy, grace ever change. God loves us. His gospel message saves us. It brings us life in the midst of whatever is taking place. His gospel message saves us. God cannot be other than who He is. May we have spent time with Him over this last year that has allowed us to get to know Him better and understand His nature and His characteristics, His attributes, and how they apply in our lives. This morning, in conclusion, uh, I came across an illustration. Esteemed theologian Karl Barth was asked by a student at the University of Chicago. The question that the student asked was, what is the essence of the biblical message? What is the essence of the biblical message? And everyone there breathless, breathlessly awaited a profound scholarly answer from this esteemed theologian. And Barth replied, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Amen? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And that will never change. Let's pray. Lord God, as we come before you this morning, and yes, we do, Lord, move into a year of uncertainty. We don't know what is coming. But Lord, we know you. We know that we experience your love. Uh, we know, Lord, that your son has died to save us. We know that in you there is mercy and grace and hope and joy and peace and, and forgiveness. But we also know that, Lord, as we, we, we move away from you, that there's also judgment and wrath. These are consistent. It will always be this way because, Lord, you are who you are. You do not change. May that very fact bring us strength and encouragement as we face the challenges that come in this next year. As we pray, Lord, in your name. Amen.